YouTube and Raul and the Dukes fans, welcome to the Lady D guitar tutorial and playthrough. It's going to be my first guitar lesson online, period. So, um, kind of put myself on the spot again, but here we go. So, if you haven't checked it out yet, you should check out our new EP, A Challenger Has Appeared. It's a little, little tongue-in-cheek reference to a little video game or something there y'all might recognize but um the uh ep started as uh, just some songs that nikki nonsense uh one of our songwriters and multi-instrumentalists in the band vocalists uh he just started by writing these songs and it kind of turned into its own ep kind of is like centralized around a punk like kind of sound you know uh lady d happens to be my favorite track off the album we didn't really use it for the single even though i think it could have been a good idea it's a song dedicated to the uh, new Resident Evil game, um, the new vampire lady everybody's made plenty of memes about and everything, Lady D. I'm not good at pronouncing uh, her last name, I don't want to mess it up or anything. Yeah, that song's about that, and um, I'm going to try not really do a rig rundown here or anything like that, but kind of give you a little bit of insight in, into how um, I'm getting the tones and how we pull it off live and what we did in the studio so here we go so i don't know who can see this but you know i use the the fender gt mustang here it's an amp that uh nikki nonsense has had for quite a while and we kind of just use it for all kinds of tones whatever we need it's very nice for recording it has like xlr like four XLR outputs in the back to do direct out and stereo and mono. Can do it in the um the fucking quarter inch jacks there. You know, as a foot switch which runs through a quarter inch jack. So many uh different capabilities in the back. But like I said, not really run rig rundown. Just kinda wanna show you what got going on for the song here. And I know you can't really see the screen, but basically what I do is I set up a bunch of patches on my pedal here in a bank and then um like if you're familiar with the gt you know that it has all these different settings here it starts off at like just um filtering through patches and stuff like that and you just hit buttons to go up and down in the banks and whatnot and then what i do is um you know you get like a tuner and stuff on there but anyway i uh make a bunch of patches on here for raul and the dukes and then i kind of just uh use three of them I get like a clean tone which is kind of like that reverby like slap back kind of delay thing um very surf tone and then I got like a, basically the same thing but in a crunch like kind of form for more grit um so yeah got that and then uh just to add some wild effects because I really don't use a whole lot of effects or anything I kind of just build it all into one tone with this pedal, I have some like, you know, everyone calls it the, the whip it setting or whatever, but you know, just kind of some tremolo with some crazy ass phaser on it and shit. Just, I just kind of use it to like break up some of the chaos and monotony in some of our noisier sections and just kind of gives you that swirling, sprawling kind of sound. But anyway, the, yeah. You know, just really gated out fuzz and tremolo shit. Anyway, moving on. So basically, the tone here, since you can't see it, I'll look at it and describe it. For the gain one, because that's what I use live, and um, I'm going to show you how to play it both ways. The gain setting here is using a 70s British stack. I got a boost on it. I got a compressor. A little bit of delay to get that that slap back effect in there you basically like turn the delay all the like the brightness all the way up um you set the you can tap the tempo on here so i just tap the tempo to a, a roundabout speed to get me that for the song and then um yeah that's basically it just has the the stack the boost the compressor and the delay on that one and all the reverb you're hearing is coming right off of the amp on that so on the clean tone here we're using a 65 
Deluxe for the amp. Fender Reverb Super Deluxe there. Um, some ambient reverb, which I, you know, you just go you go through the the reverbs you like on here and find out which works the best. I kind of just process of elimination found that this one worked the best with this setting. Um, let's see, the mono delay is basically at the same kind of parameters as the last one. I think a little bit faster, something like that. The brightness not all the way up just to let it sit in the mix a little better. That's about it. Pretty much all that's going on there, and I don't use the, the crazy setting for this song, just the, uh, you just need to know about the clean and uh, the gain. So, um, with that being said also, th for you nerds out there who like to know all the controls, this isn't what, actually, well, it's kind of close to what I use, but, you know, I usually set treble around three or four, middle around three or four and then the bass around six or seven i mean this isn't really right because it's just the uh, gt kind of just saves your settings and put them in there and then this doesn't get saved till after you mess with it but um yeah the reverb you know adjust it as you need it i usually for stuff like this put it around like in the seven position and the gain like the same thing i put i'll put like both of them in the seven position to use the gain and reverb anyway so that's it I have it turned up a little bit. I'm going to be mixing it with our stereo and the board for my vocals to talk to you. And uh, yeah, just running it through this. So it's what we're, we're dealing with today. So, uh, so um, I guess to get in a little bit of the guitar, I use a uh, Epiphone Les Paul here. It's a uh, pretty sure it's part of the same series as uh, this SG I used to have, but it's the 100 um, series. It's like called the Studio 100 or something. I don't know. I'm no guitar freaking like expert on like models and makes and that sort of thing. So somebody else out there could tell me what we got one day. Uh, I don't really know. It works, you know, like gets the job done. Double humbuckers. Sounds pretty thick. Um, just kind of had this guitar around for a while, um, courtesy of, uh, Zeb Collison, you know, he's had, a, he's had quite a bit of Epiphone guitars and stuff, so, um, yeah, always tune up your guitar, E, A, D, G, B, E, standard tuning, um, I use a snark, you guys use whatever the hell you want, foot switch, doesn't really matter to me, you know, it's, you're the artist here, you do what you want, I'm just teaching you, so, if you wanted to know how to play this song, it's pretty simple, Figured I'd start with a simple song of ours. If you guys want another one, you know, it doesn't even have to be one of our songs. You just ask me to learn something. If you like the way I teach or whatever, you know, you just let me know. I'll pop something down there, you know. Just let me know what's going on in the comments, and I'll uh, try to respond to you with your requests. So, this song, Lady D, it's in the key of G major. It doesn't really venture uh, <laughs> anywhere else honestly so you know you know your G chord G major chord however position you want to play it um I choose to use the bar chord for the main riff in this so um I'm just gonna um play it with the gain on right now even though in the studio version I play my entire track with just the uh the, the clean reverb tone there but um for the sake of doing this, because live I, I play with straight gain on the whole time, and I'll explain a little bit into that as we get into these riffs. But anyway, so the main riff is in G. You're just starting with the G bar chord, which, you know, you got your the frets and the notes across G on the low E string, third fret. You got your D, the fifth fret on the A string, and then another G, the fifth fret on the um, D string. You got your B, the third of the chord on the G string at the 4th fret, and then on the 3rd fret of the B string, um, you got your D, another D, and then uh, you got your highest octave on the high E string of the 3rd fret with another G. And basically, if you don't know how to play bar chords, you just put all the meat of your uh, ring finger, or whatever part of a finger that you're barring with, you know, but in this case, since they're major bar chords, you're going to be putting your finger across the entire top 
and then if you're familiar with power chord positions, you just put your ring finger on the, that um, D on the A string, and then your pinky on that G on the uh, D string, all on the fifth fret. So you got barring on the third, across where the G starts for the root, and then you're going to put your ring finger and pinky on the fifth fret on the next two strings. And then, basically, uh, you're a little outlier here, the middle finger flipping you off, probably the hardest part of the, uh, the barring position to get right when you're first starting it out, is um, just putting that middle finger right in between them all on, that, uh, on the B, the third of the chord. And that's how you make your, uh, you know, that's what makes the difference between a major and minor is, you know, sharpening or flatting the uh, third on a, on a chord. So uh, for a major, you know, you got to throw, you got to throw that that middle finger in there. Without it, you know, you got a minor. So that's basically the difference on that. And the song is in G major, like the whole time, even though we're gonna be using the minor bar chord position here in a minute. So, um, without further ado, you know, we're gonna be starting. The riff goes like this. And it's um, basically just moving up different degrees of the G major uh, scale there. So you're starting with the G major bar chord. You know, one, two, and three, and four, and and that that's when the uh that the like upbeat part of the riff starts, which is always kind of hard for drummers to um or anyone doing rhythm like a steady rhythm to think about because the drums is like just you know steady, fucking da 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 da, -da and then the fucking that riff comes in with that, <laughs> and that's just you know very staccato on it, and it kind of breaks up the groove a little bit, but it, I think it works in a, a really bouncy sort of way. Um, it's basically what we're doing, at least uh, for most of my guitar track anyway, and pretty much what Nikki's doing, is uh, starting with octaves on B there, the third of the chord. So we got this, um, you're just using, if you're not familiar with the octave position, you know, you just put your uh, pointer finger on the root note of the chord and then um, basically find the octave, uh, you know, two strings up and you know, you're just basically playing it like that. So you're basically playing a power chord position without the fifth of the chord in there and you're just getting the octave ring out of it. For something like this kind of adds more, I don't know, kind of sounds better like and not making it thick like the whole way around. Like you could play them all as chords like <laughs> You know, and it doesn't sound bad, but you know, to keep the, the melodicness of it, the octaves do kind of really bring it to life. So anyway, we're starting with the B, so you got 2nd fret pointer finger on the A string, and then another B, 4th uh, th fret um, B on the G string. So. And then the same thing, you're moving it one um, fret up, one half step up to C there, and you're going to be using pointer finger on the 3rd of the A string for C, and then pinky on the fifth fret of the G string for C. So, so B, C, and then you're going to be moving a whole step up. So two steps up here to, to D. So fifth pointer finger on fifth fret of the A string, and then pinky on the seventh fret of the G. So, so B, C, D, and then on the walk down, you're just going back to the same notes, except for just with a different rhythm on a, a C and B. So whole riff together, played slow once. So that'd be like the whole cycle, like two times around. Um, and then off the speed, be like. You can play it a little faster if you want. So yeah, um, basically the, the verse, you know, it's like that. The structure of the song is pretty simple. It's just verse, chorus, verse, chorus, and then uh, a solo over the, uh, the, the verse riff. And the verse never changes, it just has, uh, you know, you play the, ver the riff four times around without lyrics, then you play it four times around 
with the lyrics and then that completes the cycle of the verse each time. One of the things that makes this different between live and studio is the chorus part. It's because in the studio, and like with the rest of the song anyway, I'm playing this, this clean setting, so, and I'm not doing the same thing that I do live with the riff. So if this makes any sense. We have an uh, organ that I played, a comp also, which is the solo track of the thing, but we also have it laid down as a rhythm track, and it's more or less doing the same notes as the, all the guitars, just in, um, for the main riff, it actually plays out some of the chords for those uh, octaves that I showed you. And then um, for the chorus riff, you uh, basically are playing these triplets off of the steady rhythm, which if that makes any sense, it's something I like to do a lot is like just keep like the the steady da, 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 eighth notes going and then on top of it lay like a triple lit triple lit triple you know it's just like counter counter rhythms there counter melodies and stuff so anyway what i'm playing in the studio you can learn this either way that's why i'm teaching you um both the live and the studio so you know you know you know the song inside and out um the chorus simple chords we got a g major <laughs> And then you're moving up to the second position for an A minor. And then, like I was saying earlier with the bar chords, um, you're basically just barring the fifth fret all the way across with your four and your finger. And then you're going to make the power chord position on the seventh and the seventh on the A and D, finding your E and A there for another octave, making a power chord position. And then you're not doing a damn thing with your middle finger here. You're just going to let it sit in there flipping everybody off. Not really. You kind of want to relax it. But, so you're moving from a G major, which is that shape I showed you earlier, and then an A minor, which sounds like that, and then you're moving up to a B minor on the third, um, third interval of the G major scale. So, doing the same thing as the A minor, you know, barring across, but you're moving to the seventh fret there, and then you're putting your ring and your pinky on the power chord position, finding your F sharp, and V with the fifth and the octave on there and not doing nothing with that middle finger keep that middle finger you know steady don't do anything with it yet because we're going to be using it on the C major chord that comes next and you basically just want to keep that thing resting there for whenever it needs to be pushed down onto the next chord when you're playing like bar chords like this because you know jumping around chords can get a little tricky at first so G major a minor, B minor, and then a C major, which is the same shape as the G major here. You're just barring across at the 8th fret, starting on C, and then, you know, find your G for the 5th, C on the octave on the 10th frets of the A and D, and then you put your middle finger on the 9th fret, the 3rd of the chord on E, on the G string, and then, you know, got a full full C major chord. So basically what's going on, you, uh, coming out of the verse riff, you know it's pretty steady like... And it goes immediately into the next part, which um, what I'm playing in the studio version is just straight eighth notes. You know, it's just one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And, so just G. A minor, B, C, and it repeats that whole thing four times around, and the only thing that's kind of nuanced onto it is at the end of the fourth progression, we double up on that C, so the whole riff will sound like this. That's basically all I'm doing in the studio one for the chorus. Uh, what anything else you think you're hearing is probably the uh, the organ on the track, which I do not play live yet, only for the sake of uh, keeping our live setups simple for uh, like little little venues and stuff like that. I, you know, 
I hope to eventually bring the keyboard and everything into the mix, so we'll, we'll have pretty big live shows uh, sound-wise. So for the sake of keeping things punk rock and simple at a show, um, basically I converted all the organ parts into a guitar part, and so I don't have to play the organ in one song during a seven-song set. And um, basically that's why I keep the gain setting on to add a little more grit to it. Um, yeah, and it just makes it pop a little more instead of just keeping those clean surfy chords during the chorus. What I'm doing is playing fragments of those bar chords we call triads, and I'm playing a major triad, minor triad, minor triad, major triad for the same chords. G, A, well, G major, A minor, B minor, C major. So what we're doing, if you don't know triads, Triad obviously means three, so you're only using three notes of the chord, and um, triad is a good way to learn how, um, you know, your basic chords are formed, because that's, I mean, when unless it comes to chord extensions, you know, like uh, adding on six or nine or seven or eleven or thirteen even, um, all that kind of stuff, you know, those are just extended chords, and your, your main um, chords come out of triads, which are major um, minor, augmented, and diminished, um, there, I mean, there's different ones that can go into it, you know, you can get all kinds of crazy polychords and different dissonant stuff going on, depending on what key you're in, but that's not what we're here to talk about today, it's trying to make it simple, um, so basically, G major triad, you know, you're starting with your ring finger on the fifth fret of the D string with the G, the octave from that bar chord I was showing you earlier, but you, for this you're just going to play with your ring finger, put your middle finger on the B, on the G string, on that fourth fret, so you got fifth fret D string, fourth fret B string, and then you got your third fret on the B string. So, fifth fret on that one, uh, fourth fret on the G string with your middle finger, and then your pointer finger you want to put on the D on the B string at the third fret. Okay, so... What I was explaining earlier, the guitar riff that I play on the studio is just straight eighth notes. Now this one is all triplets. It's, well, it, the rhythm for it would be triplet, triplet, and a. Uh, so it's like triplet, triplet, and a, uh, triplet, triplet, and a. Uh, <clears throat> instead of just being one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So the rhythm for it. Starting on this G1, we'll move up to the next chords in a second, but it's... See what I'm saying? So... So you're just moving like that, so... Explain the next chords. Basically, same shapes, try to go through this quickly. You know, you got your A minor chord there, like I've shown you, your B minor chord, and then your C. So basically... To do that minor triads, just the, like the same thing as the bar chords, you just lift up that ring finger off of that, um, the major tr uh, third on the note, and you're just letting it bar on those top, top three strings there. Well, the bottom three strings. I, I, I mix up my, you know, the bottom and the top, whatever. I just call it by the note. So anyway, starting on the G, for example, you would have... And then the A minor, starting here, so you have your pointer finger on the 5th fret, which is an E, on the B string. And then same thing, borrowing, uh, barring it on the C of the G string, which is on the 5th fret as well. So you're just barring that 5th fret, and then you want to put your ring finger on the 7th fret, the A octave, on the D string. So... <laughs> The trick there is just quickly sliding up like the meat of your finger on to that bar position. You know, you have it locked into this here, and then you want to slide it down like seamlessly. Next chord, same thing. And then this one, you, you can find any way you want to make it comfortable, but you're going to have to jump from the bar position to the major uh, chord position. So. A minor, same thing, then you move it up for B, a whole step, B minor anyway, and then a half step for C major, so it'll look like... And, and I only 
change it up for the last um, for the last riff, like the same way that we held on to it for the uh, clean guitar tone. You're basically going to be um, moving up chord inversions, which is something that I, I like to do for stuff like this at the end of um, a riff like this, just to kind of tie it into the next part. So for the C major um, and the uh, the, uh, the second position here, basically we're going to be on the 8th fret starting and then uh, using that bar position that I was showing you earlier except for the trick here is to not worry about the uh, the low E and the A strings you're just going to be starting on the C octave on the D string with the 10th fret then putting your finger on, your middle finger on the major 3rd on the E like I was showing you for that triad and then just bar barring the, uh, the B and high E strings so you basically just got the top four uh, notes of the of that bar chord going on there with B E G C, and then to hold on to it because it does the da 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 da, -da um, we're going to be moving up to the uh, third position of that chord, which is all the way up here on the twelfth fret octave, and um, basically what you're going to be doing is playing the okay so if you're familiar with your first position C major chord it's the same shape you're just like with the same note layout you're just going to be moving your hands a different sort of way so like up here you know you got your C third fret on the A string E second fret on the D string open G for your G and then you know you put your uh, pointer finger on the first fret of the b string for the c the octave on there and then you know you can leave that both the e's ring open because they're part of the c chord you know whatever whatever you really feel like doing depending on how you're harmonizing with it so same kind of setup you just obviously can't finger it like that there you know and have that low that low e just ring in there because it won't sound very good so you got to change up the position there and we're not going to be using the pinky on this one, but basically to achieve that same thing, you basically are going to be doing what I'm showing you and just add your pinky here on the C of the A string on the 15th fret. But we're not using that. We're using the same top four strings of that last bar chord position I showed you. And then you're going to be starting on the E of the D string at the 14th fret, and then the G of the G string with the 12th fret, and then the C of the B string at the 13th fret, with your middle finger, so ring finger on the 14th of the D, then you're you're going to be borrowing you're going to be barring the G, the B, and the E high E string at the uh, 12th fret. So you're going to be starting that on the G string. So 14, 12 with the, your uh, pointer finger barring, and then on, when you get to that B string, you just got to put your middle finger on the 13th fret for the C. So that's your uh, third position octave inversion there so or is it fourth because i think i think first is starting up here at the top of the neck then second would be like doing your bar chord and then third is um like up here in the different inversions of the neck and then fourth is like at the octave pretty sure because there's like four positions really for learning chord inversions oh so that whole riff right there, starting with them triplets on the major and minor triads. So G, A minor, B minor, and C. So you're playing it four times around, except for on that last one, we uh, accent the, the rhythm of the rest of the riff with those uh, C chord inversions. So it should sound like this in the end. So you're just doing that da 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 on the end there. And that's basically what the organ part's doing, but that's how I, uh, that's how I play it live, just to, so I don't have to switch to the clean setting and get all the 
cords all dirtied up there. It just kind of keeps the whole thing clean. You know, you just kind of, so it's a solid transition of. Them. You know, just no effects switching, nothing like that. Just keeping the same gain going the whole time, keeping it rock and roll. Um, not that, not that clean guitars aren't. But anyway, so, uh, yeah, that's all the uh, parts of Lady D, rhythm-wise, sort of lead-wise with the chorus, because it's kind of the lead part of the song, but, um, yeah, we're going to be moving on to the solo, which, like I said, you want to keep playing the rhythm, that's the same, um, same rhythm track there for it. <laughs> You know what I mean? You're gonna be keeping that same G riff going the whole time. And the solo is basically a, <laughs> a counter rhythm and melody of the whole thing. Ba a kind of a, a little play, a little pun reference to um, Takata and Few in, uh, in D minor by Johann Sebastian Bach. Sorry, just keeping my guitar in tune here. I play the solo on the organ played on the keyboard there which maybe one day you guys request it I'll show you some keyboard tutorials piano tutorials whatever whatever you want to know figure out the ins and outs of our songs and whatnot I'd be more than happy to show you don't really feel like breaking it out right now just for the sake of it being a guitar tutorial you know let me know in the comments if you'd like to learn this on the keyboard I could give you a quick uh, little solo tutorial But if you know music theory like me and your notes and stuff, figuring out from the guitar and then on transposing it onto the uh, keyboard shouldn't be too hard. Counter point um, rhythm going on here. You know, over top that da 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 And it's going to be playing like that Takata and Few kind of um, back and forth thing that Bach did a lot. The, you know what I mean? Just uh, relying on that pedal note right there, and you know, you know, just kind of like going back like that. And uh, it doesn't necessarily do that the whole time, but that supplied the melody. Just give it that like vampire feel to it. I thought that was the only thing I was missing was like, gotta have that like vampire organ like sound in it. So um, anyway, starting on the high E string, fifth fret basically be using the uh, G major scale here so all the notes of G major scale and try to try not to run through them too much individually here but you know you got G A B C D um, E uh, F sharp and then landing back on the octave with G alrighty so um, basically what I'm doing as I'm, for each lick of the solo, I start on a G chord, and then I move to a C chord, and it kind of like plays along with the melody of the rhythm like that, um, to, to a certain extent, you know what I mean, because the, the riff's really riding on that G, but I'm creating a, a, like an illusion that the C chord is there with this solo. And uh, basically, starting on the fifth fret, high E string, at the very highest like point of the G major scale here, starting on G. So, you know, basically, we're not staying on the G the whole time like the Bach thing. It just kind of starts with that rhythm. I mean, that's pretty much why I wanted to explain that. So when you're like, trying to figure out how to lock this in, you know, you're just kind of thinking of it in those terms. So we got... So basically, we're going to be going from G to F sharp, back to G, but then we're sliding down an interval in the scale and going up to E and then the F sharp. So starting on G, you know, back and forth to it. So C or G, F sharp, G, and then E, F sharp to complete the lick. And then we're going back to C, which will start the next lick it kind of leads into it like that like a flowing pattern and then doing the same thing same like position except for we're going to be ending on the g string here which if you know how to play guitar you know where the, the frets align with that so 15 14 15 
12, 14 on the high E string, and then when you get to the B string, moving up to the C chord, you're going to be using the 13 on the B string with C, and then the 12th on the B string with B, and then back to the C, and then, you know, A, and then B with the same, same pattern as the last string. And then the only difference here is you're going to be moving up to the G uh, at the octave on the 12th fret here on the, you know, but I guess I guess I should say the uh, the, the fingering position here because I do it all with my pinky. So basically, all um, most of the time I play anyway, all four fingers are aligned to uh, their own fret. So I'm using the pinky, ring finger, and pointer finger here to to pull off all of this. And then my middle finger when I get to the next string. And then you just slide up your position, and then um, I use the ring finger on the next string. So. And then we're doing the same thing, but jumping down an octave. So, for the C part, or sorry, for the G part, um, we're starting on that 12th fret that we just ended on, so. And then moving it up here to the same notes, G, F sharp, G, E, F sharp. And then putting your middle finger on the 10th fret for C on the D string. So starting on the G string with um, your 12, 11, 12, 9, 11, and then moving to 10 on the D string with C. And then doing the same thing as you're doing on the B string, but moving up the octave, and now you're starting on that uh, C on the 10th fret we just ended on, and you're using B on the 9th fret, back to C, and then up to A on the uh, 7th fret and back to B. So. And then putting your pinky on G, ending on that G on the 10th fret of the A string. So that whole lick together. I'll put it up a little closer in case you can't see it all the way from back there. speed like that the solo does that twice around you're playing that whole like -na 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 -da 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 -da. the whole thing going up down the octaves uh, twice around and then um I end with this outro lick which kind of changes up the rhythm again so but we're basically doing the same thing except we're starting from the bottom and then moving up to the top First lick starts at the top, moves to the bottom. This one starts at the bottom, moves up to the top. If that makes any sense, but you're doing the same chords. We're moving from G to C and then G to C again and ending on that. And um, basically, what's going on here, because I'm kind of adding a major seven kind of feel to it, almost, because I'm going down, um, I'm adding the major seven of the chord on this lick. But uh, here, I'll just show you. So. We got the 10th fret on the G here, of the A string, and then the 9th fret on the F sharp here of the A string. So we're going. So going to that major 7 like I was saying, and then uh, skipping over to the B on the D string at the 9th fret, and then the A on the D string at the 7th fret. So you're going. And then back to that G on the 10th fret on the A string, so. Okay, now we're going to be doing the same pattern, same frets and everything, just different notes, starting on the C chord on the D string at that 10th fret. So the D, the D, uh, blah, 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 blah. this G position will go like this. And the C will go up a string and go in the same thing. So. Okay, and ending, ending on that, you know, the C again, like same thing as that last lick. And then moving up to the G here, so we're basically going to be using um, that same position as the first lick, and then um, just ending it like... 
So. So 12th fret, G string on the G, and then the F sharps on the 11th. Then you're moving up to the 12th fret on the B string with the B, and then the 10th fret on the B string with the A. So you know, same rhythm as that last lick, just in a different position because you're jumping up to that B string. So. To that 12th fret there and then move in here to the 13th fret of the B string with the C and then using the B on the octave with the 12th fret on the B string so this is the only part where it changes whole thing flows like that and then we hold on to that last F sharp on there and it just does a little climb up to G to resolve the chord there so, um, like this, I'll, I'll play the whole, that whole section out for you. And then I just bend up to that, uh, G, that G on the high E string there. Um, obviously this is what here in the recording, but, you know, it'd probably be fun to play along with the guitar to the organ track anyway and you'll be hearing it live like this most likely from me so um i'll play it the whole solo up close for you real quick so you can kind of get a better look at what's going on here <laughs> kind of exaggerated the bend there on that last part but basically when you get to that F sharp you're just going back to that E and then back up to F sharp and then doing a half step bend up to that G like I was telling you so you want to make sure it's singing just like that G would so But vibrato, whatever you gotta do, but that's the last note of the song. To end it live, we usually just end on that G chord. You know? So that was uh, pretty fun showing you guys how to play the song on guitar here. Um, bass pretty much like following the uh, same rhythms as the uh, the guitars and drums there, you know, just driving it along. I think the bass is a little more steady though, there's less uh, rests in the riff and stuff. You know, anyway, just pick it apart with your own ears and uh, just give it a go. It'd be nice to see people doing covers or just appreciate learning how to play our music. Uh, like I said, wanted to start simple and uh, couldn't get more simple than this uh, punk song, so even with the solo and explaining all that. Uh, yeah, so just let me know if you want to learn anything else. I've been Brandon Bailey from Rowell and the Dukes. Please check out our, you know, our debut album, Groove Tunes. Got a couple other singles, and we got this new EP, A Challenger Has Appeared. And, uh, yeah, we're happy to have you guys hear it, and hope to bring more music to yours very soon. Catch us June 5th with Alpha, our good friends from Virginia. Um, we'll be at the Rec in Fredericksburg on June 5th, and then we'll be moving to Allentown, Pennsylvania, on the 28th I might be a day off on that one with this uh band crucifier um and that that'll be awesome too like it's a pretty metal show so kind of feel like oddballs out there but we're gonna bring the thunder please come check us out um it's been fun thank you peace and love <laughs>
thanks for watching. Um, I'll catch you next time. Don't forget to leave a comment below, share our stuff, you know, download, you know, donate to the band, you know, sh you know, take a listen, stream us on every platform there is, you know, do what you gotta do to show support, man. We really appreciate it. Uh, thanks uh, again to Amy from the NAD for uh, lending me this microphone to modify for her. Um, definitely works really good for talking and broadcasting of any sort. I'm going to try and work on this thing. It's a Sure 55. You guys got any tips for uh, making this thing a better metal microphone, you know, less poppy and uh, cut out on you, let me know. But um, yeah, thanks to her for lending me this microphone to work on. Um, thank you for watching and uh, Challenger Has Appeared is out now. Check it out. We're all in the Dukes forever.